With danger around the globe, Secretary of Defense Lloyd Austin has been hospitalized after elective surgery and even ended up in intensive care at one point. Oklahoma Republican Senator James Lankford says the lack of transparency by Austin and his team was reckless. Even the apparently the National Security Council didn't know it. The White House didn't know it. Congress didn't know it. We're at a time of a lot of turmoil internationally and suddenly have the Secretary of Defense more than just a matter of wasn't there actually sent over false information saying I'm working from home when he's not actually available at all. That's a whole different issue. Prominent national security lawmakers are alarmed. Well, this is incredibly unacceptable because not only do we have the Secretary of Defense and the Department of Defense uh, keeping this secret, not making it known to the public that obviously he's having a medical crisis. Congressman Mike Turner is the chairman of the House Permanent Select Committee on Intelligence. But apparently the White House was uninformed and even the National Security Advisor uh, was uninformed. This obviously affects not only his, his performance, but his judgment, his availability. It certainly affects his control and operations of the Department of Defense, when at the same time, you know, there are real critical issues occurring. Um, and uh, to have his, his hand off the wheel in a way that, uh, that is secretive uh, certainly begs the question of his health. Uh, I think he's going to have to answer the questions, which he's not yet answered. Why was he in the ICU in intensive care? Uh, and what medical treatment was he receiving? Let's pivot now to the war against Hamas. Uh, we've passed the three-month mark. A military spokesman recently announced that Israel's military has taken down Hamas's military capabilities in northern Gaza, now focusing on the northern and central portions. This seems like an important step uh, for Israel. How significant is this, and could it be leading us closer to a victory for Israel over Hamas? Absolutely. Is there is there progressing and diminishing and dismantling the capabilities of Hamas? Uh, then certainly Hamas as a terrorist organization, a proxy from Iran, will be diminished in its ability to attack Israel and to carry out uh, terrorist attacks. Hamas cannot remain in power. Uh, Israel's efforts to uh, try to remove Hamas's ability to operate as a terrorist organization uh, in Gaza is certainly incredibly important, and it's why the United States is supporting their efforts to do so. There's also been increased military focus pointed toward Lebanon after a top Hamas leader was recently killed in Lebanon's capital. Over the weekend, we saw some intense fighting between Israel and Hezbollah as they responded to this Hamas leader's death. Do you think this might lead to further expansion of the conflict? Well, I think Hezbollah has always been an Iran proxy. They're trained, they're funded, they're equipped by Iran, and they are part of the overall effort of Iran uh, to destabilize and attack uh, Israel. Hamas's uh, ability, as it becomes diminished, the focus is certainly going to, to be more on Hezbollah, especially if Hezbollah begins to take any actions to attack Israel, which there certainly have been movements and indications uh, of, of intent to do so. As you look to the overall area and Israel's ability to defend itself, um, Hezbollah's capabilities, its military, certainly is a threat to Israel. While there's been a lot of focus on the ground conflict, there's also the Houthis basically causing trouble in the world shipping lanes, um, creating havoc for a lot of global commerce. Uh, what are your concerns about the Houthis, and are you satisfied with the way the commander-in-chief and the Pentagon are responding? Right. This is a failure from the, of the Biden administration. As the Houthis in Yemen have begun to uh, attack commercial uh, shipping lanes and also um, undertake attacks uh, to our um, military ships and our presence in the area, they, they remain a significant uh, threat in the region. Mm -hmm. uh, the Houthis are also an Iranian proxy. So once again, we see uh, the Hamas with Hezbollah with the Houthis, you know, Iran uh, through equipping, training, uh, and funding these organizations, destabilizing the area, attacking the West, attacking uh, democracies and, and commerce. Uh, the administration has been on the defense in the pr area, trying to take down attacks by the Houthis instead of just going into Yemen themselves and uh, diminishing their overall capabilities uh, to, to perpetrate these types of attacks. But the other aspect here is that the administration's failure with Hamas, Hezbollah, and the Houthis is still it goes back to the, the root of Iran. The administration has coddled Iran, including continuing negotiations with them um, on uh, you know, this, this failed 
a nuclear deal, paying billions of dollars for um, people who were detained uh, in Iran. They've encouraged uh, Iran and have certainly not held them accountable. If the president were to call you up and say, Mr. Chairman, what should we do about Iran? I want to make sure you're on board. What do you think? Well, absolutely, there needs to be a coordinated response that the administration hasn't even called together our allies to significantly identify the threat that Iran poses as, as the world commercial lanes are beginning to be impacted uh, by, by Iran. Certainly, you know, our, our allies would stand with the United States in efforts to curtail Iran's ability to undertake support for terrorist groups and organizations uh, that, are, that are harming uh, the United States, our allies in Israel. Okay, let's talk funding, because when you return to session on Capitol Hill, you guys will be facing some critical funding deadlines, one being January 19th. President Biden's been working for a way to provide funding for many of our foreign allies, including Ukraine, Israel, and, of course, House Republicans are pushing for something significant at the border. Your thoughts on these three priorities and whether, you know, basically how this will all play out? Well, the administration is is going to have to uh, come to the table in a meaningful way and negotiate on the border. We we all identify and the American public identify the uh, administration's policies on the border as a failure. But in fact, they're not a failure from the the administration perspective. The administration wants an open border. Six million people have crossed the border last month. A record number of people have come across the border. Speaker Johnson went down to the border. And as the uh, members of Congress were there with the speaker, people were still seen uh, crossing the border. Uh, the administration has got to, to understand that uh, Congress is not moving and that there's going to be a national security package. There's nothing more critical to our national security than our border. Um, mm-hmm. And also they have to understand that the American public wants want this address. Even so-called sanctuary cities are crying for the administration uh, to stop uh, the uh, huge migration that's occurring o- over the border. Uh, if the administration does come, in a meaningful way to restore back to where the Trump administration had remained in Mexico and had significantly diminished uh, the people crossing the border. And then I think there'll be great headway and great accomplishments to be able to get our national security uh, funded and our other bills funded and protect our border at the same time. On national security, was Hamas attacking Israel the best thing to happen to Vladimir Putin in some time because it shifted our focus toward the Middle East and away from Ukraine? Well, there's no question that Vladimir Putin wants um, conflicts ar- around the world. He's tried to encourage them. You know, he's tried to, in, in Europe, there are his fingerprints around the world in areas where uh, there are conflicts. Uh, but, uh, you know, this absolute tragic savagery of, of October 7th, um, I think, gave everyone at least the resolve to focus, you know, dually both on Hamas and Iran and its terrorist proxies, uh, but also uh, on the issue of, of Russia and its ability uh, to um, you know, hold its neighbors as uh, as victims of its aggression. Um, and uh, I think uh, if, if Putin had wanted uh, overall these the conflicts that occur around the world uh, to, to take our focus off of uh, his atrocities, it's not going to occur. Speaker Johnson took a lot of key House Republicans to the border this past week. Um, obviously, with such a narrow majority uh, two-seat majority at this point, Republican unity is going to be critical. Do you feel like House Republicans are on the same page when it comes to border security? Absolutely. And I think that there are overwhelming numbers in the House to support the national security package for Israel, for Ukraine, uh, and for Southeast Asia, mm-hmm. conditioned upon our, our, this administration coming to the table in a meaningful way and securing our border. Uh, there is no national security a threat that has a you know higher priority than our border must be secure. Uh, with your intelligence portfolio, I'm sure you hear plenty about China. I want to ask you about what's happening with China. We see that they're ramping up threats in the South Pacific. How much attention do you believe the United States should be paying to this? And how can we continue to best protect Taiwan from Chinese aggression? Sure. Well, China is the next regional aggressor. Um, and certainly, as you were saying with Vladimir Putin, he would hope that China uh, would undertake uh, actions uh, today, but they have not as a result of the United States and the resolve of our allies. Certainly standing with Taiwan, ensuring that they have the weapon systems necessary to be able to deter China is incredibly important. Uh, that's certainly the lesson from Ukraine of pre-positioning weapons 
Uh, it's not the U.S. boots on the ground, but it's important. It's the ability for a nation to defend themselves. Um, Taiwan is you know, currently undergoing their own election cycle, and everyone is going to be watching the statements that are coming out of Taiwan as, as, as we look to you know, this, this democracy uh, and its, uh, its, its need, the United States and its allies, to support uh, Taiwan. Big picture, national security, how alarmed are you by what appears to be coordination between China, Russia, and Iran in terms of being a headache around the globe? Well, it's certainly very troubling, and, and it includes North Korea. We're having you know, weapon systems that are being used in Europe on Ukraine by Russia that are being obtained from North Korea and that are being obtained from, uh, obtained from Iran. Um, and you certainly have coordination between China and Russia. You know, back to when um, President Xi of China stood next to Vladimir Putin in Russia, he made the statement that you know, the two of them are bringing about change that had not happened in 100 years. Well, that change that he's talking about, of course, is war from World War I to World War II, and that's where democracy defeated authoritarianism. It is certainly their goal that this time around that authoritarianism uh, would be the, uh, the victor. Uh, we're going to make certain that doesn't happen. Uh, but uh, Iran, North Korea, China, Russia are certainly, uh, as they come together, uh, embracing uh, their authoritarianism and their anti-democracy uh, aggression. The chairman of the House Select Committee on Intelligence, Mike Turner, thank you so much for your time. Wishing you a great year, sir. Mike, thank you so much, and Happy New Year to you also.